Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for another Breakfast with Blaha. And uh, today I'm having fat-free Greek yogurt and almond butter. All right. Talk about training volume. And when we talk about these things, people need to understand this is pretty well supported in both the scientific literature and the anecdote looking at elite athletes. And here's I'll get people who say, well, I want to do push-pull legs six days a week or upper-lower six days a week or whatever numbers they come up with. And you have to look at them and go, why do you think that you need to train that many days a week? Overall data doesn't support it. I, doing so just leads to overuse potentially. And why is it most people want to add more days? They want more days because they want more training volume. Well, the question I'm at, I would ask is, are you training just because you want to train, or are you training because you want more gains? Uh, and it's one thing to try to do a bunch of accumulation training with fatigue. It's another thing to say, well, I want to get the most, most muscle growth possible, or the most size possible, or the most strength possible, which is usually the focus of this channel. But we do that in the context that we know that, that hypertrophy raises your strength ceiling. So, you know, you'll get people who will say, yeah, but, you know, you could do 10 sets of 10 and accumulate all of this fatigue. Why don't you just go do some cardio? Okay, if you want to burn through some calories and work on your conditioning, do cardio. Don't do your weights to do it. Because they'll say this and be like, well, you can do this at 60% or 50% of your max, right? And you'll get good training volume. You'll hypertrophy from it. It's like, yeah. But you could have done three sets of 10 and got the same amount of muscle growth had you just gone hard on every set instead of using the first five or six sets to warm up. Because that's what you're doing. Try to get to this 100 reps. You could have done it in 30. And you would have gained just as much muscle, spent less time in the gym, and be less beat up as a result. Okay, it's Just junk volume. And there's no point in doing this other than you have an exercise addiction. And here's the thing. Just to go do some conditioning, do some GPP. All right, if you want extra days in the gym or extra time in the gym, do conditioning. I drag a sled most days. A lot of days I do it before I train. I go to do my sled drags. You know, it takes me 10, 15 minutes to get that set up, get it out of the way, it works on my conditioning. Done. But it's not true resistance training. It has some hypertrophy. But it's not, it doesn't beat your body up the same way. Now you go do something like that, it's all concentric based. There's no eccentric. No muscle damage. All right? Works on your conditioning. You can do these things. It's what I do. People can do restoration work, right? Feel you need some extra movement. Nothing wrong with do conditioning work and restoration work on your off days. I mean, restoration, really high rep things with like bands, reverse hypers, All right? You can do this stuff. Get on a reverse hyper every day. You don't have one do some banded good mornings for really high reps. Do your abs. Because again, our abs, we need the same amount of volume for abs that we do other muscles. You're not getting good ab work for just standing isometrically. You can do this other stuff, but the main training, no, you don't need more than four days a week. Unless you're trying to push your volume too high. Now, people say, but Jason, a lot, some of your workouts in some phases, your volume's stupidly high. Okay, but I don't recommend that you do that. Let's come over and make, make it a little more clear. I don't think drug-free lifters should do that. I have plenty of drug-free lifters, and you guys have seen enough of them, who are stacked. Guys, you are squatting 500 pounds. Benching 315 plus, and a lot of these guys are under 200 pounds doing this. Drug free, deadlifting mid 500. I've got multiple clients in that range who are completely clean, never touched anything in their life, who train four days a week, and we don't do more than 20 sets for a muscle. It's just not necessary. You know, people say, well, not necessary, but could there be benefits? No, not really. Just beating yourself up with more fatigue. My lifters don't hurt all day. We do this stuff once we build them up to it. 
you shouldn't be doing more than 20 sets for a muscle group. Now, how will we define that? If a muscle is a secondary mover, you count it as a half set. In other words, a chin-up is a full set for your biceps, right? Pull-up is too, but a row is a half set because it doesn't work on particularly well. You could argue a row might even be less than a half set. But in the studies, it does cause some hypertrophy, just less than a curl. Chin-up or a pull-up causes as much hypertrophy as a curl. Same thing, benching. Most of your benching, it's a half, half a set for your triceps. You guys see where we're going with this, so on and so forth. If you start looking at splash over effect into different parts of the delts, the quads, right? It's full sets versus half sets, right? Look at it from that perspective. Speed work, I count as half sets. If that, because if we're doing singles on deadlifts, I don't, I don't think I count it as a half set. I count it as a fourth set. Right, we count speed work as half sets. Ramping to a max is maybe half a set. Everything else is a full set. So if you, you do the math that way and you track it, what's our optimal? 10 to 20 sets per muscle group. 10 to 20 sets of muscle group, not exceeding 10 in a single workout. The data is overwhelming that this is your optimal hypertrophy zone if they are quality sets. And I think the point we're making here is that a lot of guys are saying, well, I want to do more. If you can do more than this stuff, you're number one, probably not training that hard. And I don't want to sound like Menzer here because he got a lot of stuff wrong. His training volumes and recommendations are excessively low and have been debunked in the literature, okay? So I don't want it to drift into that philosophy only because it leads down a stupid path that is completely debunked. If you go too far with it, the real idea here is that there's an optimal range. And if you go below it, you gain less muscle. And you go above it, you gain less muscle. And that is what most of the literature, other than one or two studies, has found. Is that when you're doing hard sets, if when you start exceeding 10 sets in a workout or 20 sets per week, you gain less muscle. You gain less muscle. It's not overtraining because overtraining would mean you would re, you would lose muscle. Okay, you always lose muscle and strength when you reach an overtrained condition. In this case, they just gain less. They gain less. It's not optimal. It's not ideal. And what I would again suggest to people, if you're not maximizing muscle growth in these frequency and volume ranges or you don't feel like you're getting enough, you are training like a pussy. You're training like a pussy, that's why. Try to do stuff like, oh, I'm going to do 10 sets of 10. No, you're not doing any hard sets, not even hard to the final two or three sets. You're just warming up and you're just doing junk volume when we come back over to, is it optimal? No. You're wasting time in the gym. And like I said, if you just want to do some conditioning, go do conditioning. But your serious resistance training, four days a week is all you need. All anyone needs. You don't need more than 20 sets for a muscle. And if you're exceeding 20 sets for a muscle, you're probably gaining less or you're just not training them very hard. Right? Or both. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.